Okay, so this is, um, if you look at the syllabus for the Sketchbook Pro assignment, it says the assignment description is open and will be decided in class. At this point, I'm going to propose that we do uh, three pages with six on a page of shoes between now and Tuesday. How's that sound? You guys get to help decide. Can you repeat it one more time? Or maybe we can ask the question again after you see Sketchbook Pro. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's do that. Okay. So, why am I showing you Sketchbook Pro? Does anybody know? It's another medium that we could use. Okay, it has one advantage over, um, has two advantages over Photoshop. One is it's extremely simple. You know how frustrating Photoshop can be. Sketchbook, so it, Sketchbook Pro is drastically simplified. Uh, but the other advantage is the lines are much nicer than Photoshop. The control you can get with the Sketchbook control line is really beautiful compared to Photoshop. So a lot of times if I want to do a nice drawing, I will do the line drawing with Sketchbook Pro lines and then I'll take that line work over to Photoshop. Okay, so how do you use it? There's um, your brush menu. The only ones I use are the pencil, which is the one I just used, or the airbrush, which is very much like um, Photoshop, except you can't so easily change the size. Like I can change the size uh, on the run with uh, Photoshop. I can't get that. So if you click on the the brush menu that was right here, you see the airbrush. I drug that out onto the. There it is. And then you click on this little thing. This is your size adjustment for the brush. Come on. There it is. So you can see the brush get bigger or smaller. That's how you change the brush size at Sketchbook Pro. But otherwise it looks, it works very much like Photoshop, but it's, it's also just like the line. It's, it's a little bit more subtle in, in your ability to control it than Photoshop. Uh, there's erasers here, soft eraser and hard eraser. I'm going to go back to the pencil now, and then this is the control. call this hardness, but it's really the size of the pencil line. So you get that by clicking on this little uh, control bar here, but it came up on, under the bottom of the edge of my screen, that's why I couldn't find it. So you can see the line, the size of that line change depending on where you set the hardness. Um, there's a few, let me just erase this stuff. The eraser, you can set the opacity of the eraser, meaning when it erases 100% or not. There's a toolbox over here. This is all the brushes. You, you can play with those, but like I said, the main ones I use are the airbrush and the pencils. 
And then there's this toolbox here, which gives you some stuff that you don't have so easily in uh, Photoshop. There's a really nice um, ellipse tool here that allows you to set the size of the ellipse you want and rotate it. And then you can use the pencil to get nice thick thin line. That's a very useful tool. Um, you know, and you'll notice no matter what shape, how thin I make this ellipse, there's no sharp corners on it. In the cold. <laughs> Um, there's in this toolbox there's layers they're very much like Photoshop layers to create a new layer you just click on the, the background layer and you just drag up and now I've got another layer and those layers um, you can control the oh I still got my lips tool on you can control the opacity just like in Photoshop, layer opacity. So you see that line I just made disappear and come back. Uh, if you double click on a layer, I think you can name it with, you go over here and you can type in the name of the layer if you want to name the layer. I don't use these tools very much because I just I prefer just to draw freehand. But if you want perfect lines and perfect ellipses, you can get it. Um, if you want to mirror something, like if you're drawing a vase or something, why isn't it drawing? Because the line is still active. There it is. So. I just draw one side and it automatically makes the other side. And you can mirror horizontal. <laughs> That's probably the key stuff. Um, This is uh, Sketchbook Pro 2010. 2011 has um, a selection tool. And you can, a little bit like Photoshop, you could select an object and delete everything outside of it. But you can't paint in it like you can in Photoshop. And that's, that's the key reason right there I don't use Sketchbook Pro because I'm always making selections and painting inside of them with Photoshop. There is a color palette here. Um, you can pick your colors, whatever colors you want. If you have a color you like, you can drag it down and uh, keep using it. You can like, create a color set of your favorite colors down here. Or you can pick the colors from here or from here. All primary colors? <laughs> uh, well, that's why you should probably pick from right around here. 
Yeah, so this, this selects the color, which is like that vertical column in Photoshop, and then you go down here to pick the amount of uh, grayness or intensity of the color. Well, here's the selection tool. So, yeah, if I wanted to select this, I'm just going to select it really sloppy. I could cut that and paste it somewhere else. And I think I can erase around it. I'm not sure. Nope. All you can do is cut and paste, or copy and paste that selection. But that can be useful. Okay, so let's do a little drawing with Sketchbook Pro. Control Z, nice thing about Sketchbook Pro is Control Z is kind of infinite. You can just keep going back, 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 back. Photoshop Control Z gets you back one time, and then you go to history. This one, Control Z, you just keep going. Uh, so let's just say I've done uh, however many steps that was, five steps. Control Z takes back one at a time. That's really nice. I've got to figure out how to get out of this uh, mirror image thing. It's got to be an X here somewhere. There it is. Okay, so you're going to be doing shoes. So, um, you can just draw the using lines and change the size of the line if you want this way Goofy looking shoe. So then I'll just go get my airbrush. being able to use uh, the brackets to uh, changing the, the airbrush size all the time in Photoshop. Outside the lines in Sketchbook Pro, no choice but to um, erase. I need to increase the opacity of that. Let's see. Where is I 
Awesome. <laughs> now, if I want to keep this clean, I probably need to make a new layer so that I can I can put this color on and go over the line and then go back and uh, erase. I am. Thank you. I'm going to put a little bit back here for you, too. <laughs> okay, so now I put that on a separate layer so that um, I can erase where I went over the line. That's the only thing you can do with uh, Sketchbook Pro. this red that went over the line. And that's something else I don't like about Sketchbook Pro. That's why I use the uh, selection tool in Photoshop all the time so that I don't have to keep going back and erasing stuff. Does the sketchbook designer not have that option either? I can't remember. I can't remember. I've only used sketchbook designer a couple of times, but it has some stuff that uh, it's like a combination of sketchbook pro and it's like a combination of Photoshop and Illustrator is what it is. Okay, so that that. Uh, that red is too dark on the top, so I'm going to get an eraser and reduce the opacity of it so I could erase some of it, but not all of that. So there's, there's one shoe. I'm asking you guys to do six shoes on a page. I think I want to make the, the whole bottom have a... Is it uh, shoes specifically or just footwear in general? What's the, what's the difference? Well, you have boots and there's sandals and... I like boots. I know Jacob wears like those foot shaped shoes. I don't use this enough. I'm, I'm clumsy with moving around in it, trying to find the, the brush size.
guys ready to try it? Does it look like fun? <laughs> and uh, I don't know what the technical term is for, but but there's there's always one side the the is got more of a curve than than the other side. The inside of your the inside of your shoe, the medial side, has a big curve like this. And the outside is more flat. And that's that's key. So you could you can build the footprint of the shoe and then the center line of the shoe. Find the center line. To measure the height up from the from the bottom to get the center line. And then build around that. Uh, and kind of like if you're, if you're drawing a car with sections. So that, that might help you get your shoe started off on the right foot, so to speak. complex shape, just draw the footprint first, the, the flat, like the top view in perspective on the ground, then draw the center line, and then sections, and then just fill it out. Okay, okay. Are you turning those egg shapes into something that's part of the external part of the shoe? Yeah. Kind of makes me think of motorcycle boots because you know, like they have those little reinforced areas for the ankles and.
mentioning that you were going to show also how to do the flip vertical reflection thing. Oh, okay. I can wait then. a really sketchy one. <laughs> I, I didn't really <laughs> plan on finishing that one because I, I thought I was just showing you guys those. I just thought it was interesting that you were utilizing the, the sole parts in it to be part of the external features. Well, sometimes that's how we get designed. You know, we just uh, accidents.
Get that thing running. <laughs> so I'm going to put them together on a page now.
draw them in SketchBook Pro. Um, but you can use Photoshop to put them together. You guys, I would like you to just, at least for this one assignment, to do your drawings in SketchBook Pro. And then um, you can put them together in Photoshop. Okay, that Still turning this in, even though no, mm -hmm. no, nope. not turning it in. Thank you. 